All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CADCAST episode number 782. I'm your host, GBD, here in Long Island, New York. And always, we're, as always, we're joined by a man who's doing the best he can with what he's got, Wombat. <laughs> I'm glad I could help you out with something. Yeah, I had nothing planned. Wombat literally just said those words five seconds before we went on the air because <laughs> his internet was broken. It was. And who knows? It may happen again. But, you know, at least I'm here now. So, and he's doing the best he can. I'm doing the best I can. With what That's he's all got. I can do. Mm -hmm. As we yep. all are. I know. It's cold. Not in here. No, that's true. 75 degrees. I got on a nice warm cardigan. My new cardigan sweater that I got. Like Let me see it. I can't even see it. All right, let's see. That is a grandpa sweater. It is a Shipwreck's got a grandpa oh. sweater on, too. His is a little less grandpa -y than mine. <laughs> Mine's mine just a v-neck sweater. There's... How's this a grandpa sweater? Because grandpas wear sweaters. Right. I'm wearing a manly ping pod t-shirt. No sweaters for in the table tennis world. There's no, no, never. <clears throat> never. There's crying. <laughs> and, oh my God. I didn't even mean to wear this shirt, but I might as well, since I'm going to talk about ping pong anyway, because there was a tournament on Saturday. Oh, is that what TTT stands for? Table tennis tournament? Yes. Ah, I figured it out. Do I win a prize? And is there some wrestler, like Triple T or something? Triple H, fuck. There, I think there you're, is a you're thinking of, now. Uh, of Sergeant Slaughter's G.I. Joe tank. That was the, that was the tri t wasn't it? The trip, well, ship, or ship must know. I think it was the Triple T tank. I trust Ship. If ship says it's called the Triple T and it's G.I. Joe, something G.I. Joe. I, I mean, I'm not going to fight him on it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was a, there was a local, the local table tennis tournament at the club. Haven't done one in a while. And it's just like a slice of life. Like my division, I, ha I played against an 81-year-old person and an 8-year-old. And those ages are like the same in a lot of ways. It or at least has the potential to be in terms of how, <laughs> how people can behave. I don't know. Like, I feel did like. An eight, did you make an eight year old cry or an 81 year old cry? That's the question. Both. Like, the eight year old was on the verge of tears at all times, but he's the club's owner, the club owner's son. And so he's constantly looking to his dad between points for coaching, which is allowed. It's not like tennis. But. He's like fighting back tears. And then like, if something doesn't work out, he's like, I hate you, dad. You're the worst dad. And he's crying. And like, this is the middle of the match. And I'm more like, I'm playing in the under 1900 division, which is pretty high up. And this kid plays in every division. So no matter what division you're playing in, good chance you're playing. But I'm enough ahead of him point wise that if I beat him, I get nothing. And if he beats me, he gets a lot. He steals my points, basically. When you, when you lose to somebody who's, like, significantly below you, a couple hundred points, they take all your goodies, and it sucks. Like Highlander. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. Except the Highlander gets something, I think, right? When he kills... The quickening. He gets something out of it, right? They, so I, if I win, I get nothing out of it except not losing my quickening. Mm -hmm. Anyway... So you got the kid, whatever, telling his, I hate you, dad. You're the worst dad ever, and whatever. But then you got the 81-year-old guy. And he's just fucking talking wild shit the whole match. Like, he'll miss a shot. And he does this all the time. But he'll just, and he just, he can't really move because he's 81. And he'll just say, like, what are you, he'll look at his paddle and just, like, do a monologue. What are you doing? You, you got to hit it. Like, what are you, and it just, like, so loud and like he doesn't even like get the ball because like if the ball is too far away on the floor like he's not wasting that energy so you have to get the ball and you have to ignore the fucking wild shit that's coming out of his mouth because the whole point is like he's trying to get you off your game you know it's a head game to the point and, like he's like pretty good even though he's 81 so anyway this goes on and I, I beat Does him. Does he have a good dick swinging serve like uh, like some other people do? He has like an illegal serve, I think. That's what I, I mean. I wasn't really paying attention, but he, I don't think he really throw, throwing the ball up. I think he's just more like, 
Yeah. He's not, he's not dick swinging, sir. Of Wombat requires like moving, right? Like it's true. It's a lot of effort. Like he doesn't, he does good, but he doesn't have to really move anyway. So I beat him. And as soon as I beat him, he was like, I'm quitting. I'm, this is my last tournament. Like, and he says it so loud. And it's like the same as the eight year old. You have to like talk them down after the match. And it's like, okay, the eight year old, I understand, but the 81 year old is worse. And I'm like, you don't, I'm like, what are you talking about? You did great. Like it was close. Like I'm much, you know, you're 81. Like you did so good. Like just even you playing in the tournament is a huge win. Like you shouldn't talk like that. And we're walking off, we're walking and I'm still like, and he's still complaining. And you know, we're now we're on the sidelines and I'm still like talking him down. Cause he's like mad at himself. And he goes on to say, you know, and I found out recently that I have like a heart uh, affibulation or something like that. And, you know, I thought like I was going to live to a hundred, but now I'm going to die soon. And he just said it just like that. No smile, just like right in my face. And I was like, what do you say to that? Like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, oh, like. Got a will? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, see, they say, you know, you don't realize the mental aspect of the game. You know how physically demanding it is, but oh, you I thought you were saying they're mental. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fuck. Everybody's mental. Yeah. Everybody is mental, and uh, <laughs> not that uh, he's mental, but I also met Wally Green at at the tournament. Who was hanging? Do you remember Wally Green? That name? Does that mean Why anything? It? To yeah. You Why is like, that name? He was like a pro you met in uh, Japan or whatever. Did that you take him to? Uh, Tokyo American Club? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. This is this is actually if you go back and listen to Cadcast forty seven, you can listen to the time I went to the Rockstar table tennis event in Tokyo. That's and I, and I met Wally Green there, who was the motion capture uh, subject for Rockstar's table for tennis. Spin. What for spin? For spin? For spin? No, <laughs> yes, yeah, spin. Right. Um, I'm not sure which character he was for. Um, but anyway, he was there just hanging out. He's recovering from hip surgery, uh, or yeah, I think hip surgery. Um, so he was there hanging out and, uh, that was, by the way, that was 17 years ago. I know. That's such a long time. I remember going to the event in New York for Rockstar's table tennis. Wow. They had one. I didn't even remember that. They had one. They had one. And I took a friend of mine with me cause it was, bef I mean, I wasn't even, I, was I even married? No, I was married then. I think. Yeah, 17 years ago, I was married. Uh, I was a newlywed. And I remember going with a friend of mine, and I remember it might have been the first time I really had Shake Shack. They had Shake Shack there? They had Shake Shack there. You have to remember, that's when there was only one. Right. So it was like a big deal to get Shake Shack, <laughs> and they got, like, unlimited Shake Shack. And Rockstar, they were like, spending that and, money. Yeah, and, they were, and I, I remember at the time, you know, our contact there was there, and he was so excited that we were there. And he's like, have you had Shake Shack? We got all this Shake Shack. You got to have as many burgers as you could shove down your gullet. And I'm like, okay, I'll have some Shake Shack. It's That's my big memory of that. Of that? Oh. Uh, Mine was the incredibly fancy like house that they rented to have the, the party in and, and Wally. And then we played table tennis after in the in like Shibuya somewhere. 17 Hell, years the, ago, not the per last The weekend. person who told me I should eat a lot of uh, Shake Shack now is a fitness expert. So, you know, it all, it all goes full and, and 17 years later, they're, the money they spend is still, like, being broadcast out there. So we're mm -hmm. still advertising for the game, <laughs> talking about the game there you go. years later. It was well worth it. Right. Right, right. The game is long gone, but, you know, worth, uh, burgers. Right. They're, it's a public company now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was pretty much my, my fun weekend of... I was like, well, I went, you know, I went five for one in my matches, but, like... I didn't feel great about the guy telling me that he was going to die soon, yelling at me. Um, but my, my rating did go up 100 points, so I felt pretty good about that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he was there today when I was hitting, and I was like, he was like, want to hit? I'm like, not really. I mean, I didn't say this, but like, why would I want to play against, play yeah, against I, yeah, somebody I, who's like so miserable? You. Yeah. Like... Don't they know they're miserable? Like when you yelling at somebody during a game, during a game, like you don't know that you're miserable to play against. Just I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
I, I went and did some more antique shopping over the weekend. I've, <laughs> I've talked about the the place that's like they have like a liquor li- license, so you can like walk around an antique shop while you're drinking. Okay, not just beer, before. but like actual hard alcohol. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, either right. way, they're full because they, it's attached to a, a restaurant. But then the entire antique mall, like, is I don't know, open carry or whatever. You're just walking around <laughs> doing your antiquing. Sure. While, while you're uh, while you're having a good Friday or Saturday night, I guess it was. Uh, who could say? Um, the so I got I found a GoBot. Like, was, <laughs> Which one? Found a, uh, it's it's just a little jet one. I, I don't remember what his name Not, was. Uh, whatever his name was, Force One or whatever his name no, was. No, no, no. This it's he's gonna have some some I don't know, GoBot jet name. I don't know. He was a small little GoBot jet, but he was like he was like fifty cents, and he was all there. So I get <laughs> I got I got this GoBot, but my like my highlight find was we have a like in the center center of Cincinnati we have Fountain Square, right? There's like this big statue, like if you've ever seen like shots of Cincinnati, like there's like the, it's like a woman, she's got water coming off her hands. Right. So there was like this watercolor painting of of this. It was a nice, nice painting and everything. But like when we were looking at it, like, okay, that that's cool. And then I saw like in the corner, there's like an inscription. And it, it, it's, it's signed by, the the boss on WKRP, Gordon Jump. Jump. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh come on! You you cut it off before I can impress everyone with my useless <laughs> knowledge. I'm very upset. Yes. Gordon Jump signed it. Yes. It's got like a little like. Uh, Does I don't it know. say too Dudley? Because there you go. I'll bring it to something else. But no, no. Did but you buy it? Of course I bought it. How what much you, was it? You, uh it was less than a hundred dollars i don't remember i mean it's like a, it's a nice like it was already a nice painting like framed up and everything and so it was painted by gordon jump no oh uh, not not painted by gordon jump but he he definitely like Touched signed it. this this painting but why was would he sign by, it by frank boner I, I don't, I couldn't tell you who it was painted by. I just it was he just signed it because jump. he's on WKRP in cincinnati and it's a picture of cincinnati you got it. It's That's a picture from the opening cr- title credit. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. But just somebody's painting of it. It's funny because when you said, you statue. know that statue, I was going to say, you mean the one from the beginning of WKRP in right. Cincinnati? If you said right. that, I, was, I, I was trying not to say that because yeah. I, I was getting there. But yes. Wait, yeah. Because so when you said, you know what Cincinnati looks like, I shook my head no, but then I forgot that I watched WKRP. Well, you forgot since. that you do. Right. Yes. Exactly. Or the inside of a radio station that supposedly is there but is probably yeah. likely not and we have radio stations Who i knows? meant that one uh, yeah, <laughs> they, <that's>, filmed. <laughs> they have wrkp <laughs> but yeah so that was that was my great find and we'll be proudly displaying that in the house nice nice yeah he's dead he did been, yes he's, he's been dead for a while yeah i yes. bet it's okay he had a very nice career he was you yeah. know on wkrp he Molested Dudley in the bicycle store, and uh, he was the Maytag man. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. have, have had some show feedback. Sure. Drew J. Craig has to say, I request that you take this episode seriously. Kidding, please don't actually do that. We have no intention on taking anything seriously. Which brings us to our next comment, which is <laughs> very important. This is from Andrew. And Andrew has to say, I don't know if this is the right way to contact the podcast. He emailed me or he emailed through the, through the, through the CAG website, actually. Okay. Yeah. But I'm writing to say that Wombat's comments on the game awards should be erased from (laughs) the podcast. That's a first, by the way, I don't remember any, I remember people like hating things that we've all said, but I don't remember anyone asking us to remove content from the podcast they're that ignorant wombat it's an award show the idea is to honor the people that bust their asses making these games and then you say you don't even like the people making speeches at the oscars do you understand what an award show (laughs) is 
unbelievable. Why are you reading it like AI? Oh, I thought I was reading it dramatically. <laughs> oh, I thought it was like I was AI it reading it dramatically. I was giving it a dramatic reading. Oh, okay. I felt it deserved one because it's because <laughs> of his mad. un his unnecessary anger over something incredibly stupid. <laughs> well, what do you say? That's all you have to say. Oh no, he's a hundred percent wrong. The game oh. awards are a marketing event. Uh, they are not I have nothing to do with honoring people who make games. They are a vehicle to sell more games to more people. And the awards well, it has is something just sort to of do like, with honoring the, the, people. No, it, the, the awards <laughs> are a framework between selling more games to more people. Okay, is it more? Does it, it have to do more with honoring people in gaming, or more with paying Jeff Keighley's mortgage? I think it has more to do with paying his mortgage, and I think we all know that. Okay, just just asking. Yeah, I I think it's a ridiculous. To, and yes, I stand by my statement that if you do not give speeches in public on a regular basis or even a semi regular basis, I have no interest in hearing you stumble through your ums and ahs as you try to remember the name of your your children. Um, uh, <laughs> they can't remember uh, their children. Uh, I'm so happy to win this. Uh. The uh, thanks to my wife and my children. Uh, hey, go to sleep, guys. Daddy's coming home. We did it. Yeah, no, I don't need. I don't need to hear it. Congratulations to you. I'm glad you have something to put on your mantle. What if but they no. practice? What if they promise to practice their speeches ahead of time? I mean, it, it, it's not even that. They would have to be interesting. Like they literally have to promise. We got professional speech writers to write our speech for us in case we win. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> because they're they're always boring and they're always terrible. Sounds like you need won. to start your the competitive game awards. And the uh, and the concept even with video games that one person is the person who gets the award. Even you know when what two, three hundred people make some of these games? Are they giving three oh, hundred awards? Have you, ever, have you ever gotten to the end of a game? Seriously. Does everyone <laughs> get the awards? Credits? Who gets the award? Who is responsible? They shred the award into into hundreds of pieces after they receive it and <laughs> distribute it to the crew. Exactly. So no, so you're Andrew, watch, we're, you're we're watch not going to next year. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I didn't watch it this year. <laughs> right, Andrew, don't take criticism from a guy who didn't even watch it. Yeah, serious. <laughs> it's okay. He's, he's he's tried to stir you up, and you fell right for his trap, Andrew. You even wrote a real email. That's old school. Not even social media. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, shit. What happened? A lot more my, bad shit just thing, happened? My thing happened again, and I, I lost my recording for about a half a second. That's okay. Nobody notices. I know. I got no comments saying that I didn't do it the normal way last week. Oh, that was weird. But we're back. Yeah, no, no one noticed. Sorry about that.